Welcome in everyone. Welcome in. Did you make me one of the panelists, brother? Yeah, you're on, you're on. Everyone can see you. All right, awesome. Super excited. I see my boy Brad LaValley's out there. What's up, brother? It's good to see you. Or not see you. <laughs> All right. So excited to see to be here. Devaker, our, our host, going to take it away. Um, Brett, you doing okay, man? Everybody's good? All good. All good yeah. here. Scott Doyle made it. Man, thanks, Scott, for joining us. I appreciate it. Hey, Reed. Reed's on. What's up, Devaker? What's up, buddy? You got the true California spirit, man. I love the the the, the background, man. That's great. Yeah, it's uh, I've got a surfboard in every uh, every operatory of my office. Really? That's got awesome. Two in the waiting room, and what's that? That's awesome. That's yeah. that's cool. Helps relax the patients, I think. Gives them a little vibe, a little relaxed vibe. Hey, it doesn't always work. I we like try. It. That's all. <laughs> Cool. Uh, let's take a look here and see what's going on. Yeah, we've got some heavy hitters on. I know. I've got Landwehr. Man, Landwehr took time out of his day. I can't and, uh, imagine. David, I can't believe it. It's World Series, man. I'm impressed. With the Dodgers <laughs> playing your boys. Great game last night. If you guys want to use the chat feature, it's all there for you. You want to give Reed a little bit of hassle? It's 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 ready. Can't hassle me, man. I'm from LA. Oh man, Mike, Mike, <laughs> Mike Feldman likes your Feldman. beard. Thank you, my friend. He might just be jealous about the beard. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> it's my COVID beard. It looks good. My ginger beard. Trying it out a little bit. A little something. A little different. I know Brett likes it too, right? Looking smooth. That's super always. clean shaven right now, man. Look at that, man. He looks like he just <laughs> shaved like 15 seconds ago. <laughs> All right. Um, let's take a look. Ah, Frost. Steve Frost. Thanks for the shout out there. Yes. No. <laughs> That's great. You know, I think we should... Um, We, 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 let's, let's, let's get moving here. I think this is a good time to, you know, I think people would join, but that's okay. We want them to join as we're, as we're uh, continuing on there. Hello, everybody. My name is Devaker Kinra. I am a partner here at US Endo Partners and welcome to our inaugural webinar event. I'm really excited about this. Uh, I got some great panelists online with me. Um, I wish I could see you all in person, but you know, this is, this is the way it is nowadays. So the title of our uh, webinar today is Shifting into the Third Dimension of Endodontic Practice, Elevate Your Professional and Personal Life into 3D. Um, as you can see, uh, we got two great speakers that are ahead of you and I'll wrap it up tonight. Um, there's a, if you have any questions, use the chat feature. Um, and you know, I'd like to introduce the, the two, first two speakers up tonight, uh, Dr. Brett Gilbert um, out of King Endodontics in Chicago, Illinois, and Dr. Reed Pullen, Thanks for coming. Uh, Brea Endodontics out of uh, Brea, California. They're each going to have the, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll talk about the title of their lecture. It's really a, a great lecture. You know, these guys were not always friends. These guys were not always friends. Take a look at this. <laughs> I've been at a lecture where they did a point counterpoint and I thought they're going to rip each other's heads off. But <laughs> since they joined US Endodontics, we, we're, we're peace loving. We bring these people together. You know, I, I could probably take them both on because you know, they, they seem like punks to me. But uh, I think that you know, it's pretty cool having them as one of my partners. It, it's, it's great to have them. I feel honored to have them as that. Um, 
And again, in this format, there won't be any point counterpoint. I'm each going to give you uh, as a moderator, the appropriate amount of time, you'll be able to talk for your 20 minutes, you know, and, and move on. But uh, Brett, why don't you go ahead and take it away? And we will have a Q&A at the end. So if you have some questions, please save them and we'll try to get through all of them at the end. Go ahead, Brett, take it away. All right, so super excited. Can everyone see my slide? Good, okay, so yeah. welcome in. This is an incredibly exciting night for all of us at US Endo Partners. Uh, the ability to connect with so many of you out there, our colleagues, so many people who are interested in learning about what is going on in endodontics and endodontic practice. And so tonight I wanna bring you into a little bit of my experience. I'd like to make a, a really important comparison about uh, the way that we shift paradigms. and. 3D endo shifting into a new paradigm in practice. And that's the part that I really want to get to tonight. Again, so excited that you've joined us. Uh, we're all very proud of what's being built with US Endo Partners. We're very proud of the collection of incredible individuals that are involved. And truly for me, it's an honor to be a part of it. So let's talk a little bit about paradigm shifts. So you hear the word paradigm, you know, what does it really mean? And as Thomas Kuhn quoted, a profound change in a fundamental model or perception of events. And so as we can all see, you know, it, I think of it as like peripherally, we all saw some changes coming. We've heard about it for years. And the longer the calendar goes, you start to see these changes being implemented all around us, wherever your locale is. And so the idea is that dentistry is currently in a profound change of the fundamental model of practice. And that really creates some new interesting situations for us as referral-based specialists. And so the reality is, is that there's a new paradigm ahead. And it's important that we are first aware of what's happening, but then understand the options that we have to sort of move with the times and move with the changes so that we can stay on top to protect ourselves, our practices, and most importantly, the specialty that we are all so passionate about. So let's talk about, in some sense, the biggest paradigm shifts in clinical endodontics. And for that, I take you back to my day that I got that certificate in my hand out of the University of Maryland, June 2003. I'm out, I'm in practice. And at that moment in time, I would say that everything that we use today, for the most part, was already in my hands. And at that moment, I would say the biggest paradigm shift in clinical endodontics to that point in 2003 was the dental operating microscope. And wow, what a paradigm shift that was. And we all enjoy the benefits of that each and every day inside of each and every tooth that, that we treat. And it's just a gift. And so we fast forward now to 2020 and there's been some changes, right? And I added irrigation technologies below the microscope because that's a newer advance. But when you really look at the paradigm shift, at least in my generation and era of practice, there is no doubt CBCT is a paradigm shift in endodontics. It has opened our eyes. It has allowed us to see what we treat. It has allowed us to much better understand what we look at, diagnose, treat, assess for healing. And it's a miracle. It's amazing. And we're all using it and enjoying the benefits of it every single day. Let's face it, there's just no comparison. There is no comparison from a two-dimensional radiograph to a 3D volume. And so this picture, I think, represents that in so many ways. And I know I'm preaching to the choir, but I just want to put the point that this is a paradigm shift in our clinical practices, something that we can touch and feel and, and really work with. And it's important to recognize that these paradigm shifts are important to catch because they make a huge difference in what we do. So the effect of CBCT on clinical endodontic practice, I'll, I'll go as far as to say it took us from good to great. And wow, we all know these cases. Many of us are educators in this group that are here with us, joining us. As endodontists, we educate all day, every day, patients, referring doctors, team. We have this classic radiograph. You take a look at it. Your eyes have already scanned it over. I know that you've already assessed it in two seconds. And of course, the whole classic, just understanding that in 3D, things often look a little bit different. And there's things inside the bone that we simply can't see with radiographs. And so this is just that classic illustration, huge lesion on the distal. Obviously, it's you know discovered only when you get rid of the cortical bone and can go in between. And so this takes us from good to great, because let's face it, when you're looking at this periapical radiograph compared to this slice, this is information we need to know. 
our ability to give prognosis, our ability to understand what's capable of healing as far as the body is capable of healing in a certain case, we need knowledge. And this technology gives us knowledge and therefore it is a true paradigm shift. Um, but wait a minute, we went from good to great. Could we great get even better? Could we go from great to excellent? And I ask you to open your mind to the idea that as much as we recognize the amazingness of, of Cone Beam CT, could it get better? And so I wanted to just say that this is probably just an example of something we all look at every single day, every case. We have this incredible ability to see in 3D, um, you know, not knowing everyone that's in the room, but to say that for the most part, if you didn't practice with this early in your career and you do now, it makes you a whole lot stronger. And if you learned on this in your residency and you're, you have this at your disposal every day, you know what a gift it is. But what if it could get better? And I wanna give a shout out to Dr. Bruno Acevedo, the comb beam guy. Um, I've become aware of the next level in comb beam through my partnership with US Endo Partners, through our, our close relationship with Bruno. And the comb beam guy is the man. And what he's showing us with his new technology, as you can see the Evolve DX, uh, type of technology is, I'll tell you what, this is really helpful to me. If I'm treating a lower incisor and I can see this incredible detail, if I can literally visualize every inch and millimeter inside and outside of this tooth without scatter, without artifact, with just clear understanding and modeling, this to me is taking something really, really great in comb beam CT and making it even better and making it excellent. So tonight is about opening your mind to the fact that we live in a world of good and great, but wouldn't it be great or greater to live in a world of excellent? And can we open our minds to taking that next step? And so again, big shout out to Bruno. We all use this technology daily. So you see in these you know, planes of view, you see what we all see. And these images look really clear to me. They look excellent. You know, you see the implant, you see the molar, he's scrolling through that axial. You know, but when we go from great to excellent, it changes your perspective a little bit. Could things be better? Could I see more detail? Could this help me be a better clinician? Could this help me be a better diagnostician? Does this make us better? And to me, the answer is yes. I think this in and of itself to be able to filter and be able to view comb beam in this clarity with this amount of detail, that's another paradigm shift. So are we open to getting better? Are we open to moving away from what we're used to, what's safe now and moving into the next level? So take a look at this axial slice. You see, of course, very clear imaging as far as what I'm used to seeing. And then boom, you add in a shift. And now all of a sudden, now you know, first of all, these are carriers. And not only that, you can see the difference between the carrier and the GP and the sealer. So now I have this incredible information that I'm using to bring to my treatment. Now, again, before my partnership with US Endo, I had no idea about this, that this was happening. But now this is something that I have the ability to work with. And, and Bruno has been really helpful for me one-on-one, -on -one, helping me with cases and certainly giving me this video and, and the images you saw to share. Um, so Bruno has been awesome in his advancement to shift the paradigm, to shift everything forward from great to excellent. And I just thought it would be cool to see this because when I saw this for the first time, I was a little bit blown away. And I thought to myself, wow, like we thought we had it good, but we might even be able to have it better. So that's, that's kind of the idea of where we are with 3D. Now, our paths into practice are all pretty similar, right? And maybe you shortcut it a little bit. You know, you go from dental school into some kind of post-grad program, or if you're lucky enough and you had the intention, it was your desire to go to residency directly, fantastic. And then we wind up in private practice if we so desire. Um, of course, I just want everyone to know that that picture in the bottom corner is not my operatory, but when I Googled endodontic operatory and that came up, I have such respect for whoever is, 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 has the ability to sit down in this room every day and do root canals. But this is our path. And so the path into practice is very well set, much like our practice lives. Seems pretty well set. We sort of know, we've seen what has happened historically, you know, the succession of owners from practice to practice. And that's really what we have all known. So I ask you then, what's then the biggest paradigm shift in, in endodontic practice? in practice management, in practice modeling. 
you know, we have the clinical shifts, that's clear in, in CBCT and microscopes, et cetera. But what is the paradigm shift in practice? When I got out of practice at a school in 2003 compared to now, I can't say that there's been a huge paradigm shift in practice. And so that's really what we've now encountered is now this opportunity to have an absolute paradigm shift in the model in which we practice and what that means for us. So my experience in private practice is, is very simple. I was an associate at a practice for a year and a half. I then joined my current practice, King Endodontics in 2005 as an associate, had that experience. I then partnered with my partner at that point, 2007. Okay, great, life is good, all is well. 2014, he retires. I now am sole owner of my endodontic practice. And yes, it felt amazing. I was excited, but that was immediately followed up with the feelings of vulnerability just ahead. And I know that if you're out there and you're joined us for this program and you own a practice, you know what I mean by vulnerability. There's a vulnerability inherent in owning this small business and being on your own. There's uncertainty as well. The climate is changing. There's a lot of changes with corporate dentistry around us. Our referral bases are changing. Patient understanding, patient expectation, patient insurance situations are changing and there's uncertainty. And with that, I found myself with more questions and answers about my future, the future of my practice, and ultimately the future of my family. And probably for a really important point is also the future of our specialty. Where are we headed? And I found myself awake a lot of nights, as many of you probably are too, and I'll admit that readily. I would be awake at night thinking, worrying, what's going to happen? How is this all going to unfold with so much change? So in my experience owning a private practice, I found that I always felt vulnerable. You know, the what ifs. And those what ifs, if you're, if you're sitting here and you own a private practice, an endo practice, it's what if you get sick and you can't practice? What's the value of your practice then? What if you're hurt? What if someone in your family is sick or hurt? What if the building burns? What if, what if, what if? And that is exhausting, quite honestly. And maybe you don't experience this. And if so, you are able to insulate yourself. But I think for the most part, most of us do have these vulnerable feelings. And that was the number one word I would probably put toward my sole ownership of my practice. How about a future buyer? I bought my practice from a, from a, a gentleman and who's going to then buy my practice from me? I think we realize right now the debt load of the out, outcoming or you know, new grads is out, outrageous. Let's be honest, outrageous. And so the debt load is there. The ability, whether your practice is valued at X, you still need a buyer to meet you at that value. And what we've seen, and Devaker is going to talk about this a bit, is that that value is probably not going to be what you think it is. And the longer that this situation continues, as far as the change in climate, and the paradigm shifts, where are we? So I worried about this a lot. And this was always at the top of my mind and, and contributed to the vulnerability. And then ultimately the responsibility. I mean, 24, seven, 365, you guys all know what I mean. It never leaves your shoulders. It's a weight. You're a CEO, you're the HR department, you're the decision maker. You're also then expected to turn from a desk full of bills and lawyer notes and tax notes and turn and then walk into an operatory and be a world-class outstanding clinician. This is an awful lot to bear for a single human being. And so I want everyone to know that this is my general experience. If you can relate or it resonates with you to some degree, you know, that's great because I think we're all in the same boat. Like I said, our paths are all very similar from the moment we walk through dental school to the moment we retire. And so I'm sure that a lot of this does resonate. So man, wearing both hats, CEO and clinician, I found it to be very, very much exhausting, like I said. So in general, I own my own private practice. I'm a sole owner. I, I have associate, but in general, I feel like I'm living on an island. And although I know there are other islands like this island, and I know that the waves crash on that island as well, and I know that someone from another island can give me some advice on their experience in their island, but in general, when something goes wrong or something happens, I'm on my own. I'm on an island. And that responsibility, that vulnerability, all of those feelings were very strong for me. So how do we make a move here? How do we have a shift? 
what can be that paradigm shift in endodontic practice, not clinical, but endodontic private practice. And Ken, great, because let's be honest, we've all enjoyed a beautiful, beautiful experience in private practice. We have a beautiful ability to make a great living, help a lot of people, support them. But can we open our minds to the concept that maybe there is something better and it's here right now. And that's what we're here to talk about tonight. So for me, as a sole owner of my private endodontic practice, I was constantly searching, looking through any lens I could to see what the future held, to find my place. How can I secure my future forward? How can I continue to grow? And I'll tell you what, I looked through a lens and what I found was US Endo Partners. And when I realized what was being built, when I realized what was happening, I was really, really excited about it. And I sort of ran full force toward it trying to find my way to see if this would work for me and my practice. And I'm so grateful that it really did. So my practice, King Endodontics, I partnered in March of 2020. Um, if you look at that date and where we are in the world, you can see that the timing was somewhat divine for me. I was able to join right before COVID hit. Um, I was able to um, just absorb and be the benef beneficiary of so much support uh, through this difficult time. And for me personally, it was truly divine timing. So instead of being on an island all by myself as COVID hit, I found myself as part of a network of islands, connected, right? Contributing to one another, supporting one another, being a part of meetings, COVID hits every week, all the partners are on calls, telling what's working, what's not working, supporting us with documents, with PPE procurement. I all of a sudden didn't have the CEO hat on anymore. I was just this clinician. And I'll tell you what, it felt as free like I could fly up in the air. So it was an amazing experience. And I wanna share this beautiful growing platform with these beautiful practices and beautiful endodontists uh, coupled with some incredibly brilliant and hardworking, dedicated business partners. Uh, it's been a tremendous, tremendous experience. And this, this graphic is growing very, very quickly. And, and I'm just so proud that, that I can be a part of this. So uh, behind every US Endo partner is a growing community of support. Uh, our founding member, Dr. Steve Frost, many of you know, uh, up now to 70 doctors plus, 39 doctor partners plus, and over 43 offices. So um, again, US Endo partners for me has been an incredible experience. And, and I'm just giving you my timeline and I wanna express to you just exactly how this experience has been. So U.S. Endo Partners is the nation's first and fastest growing endodontics only. Now, this is a new term for me. And for many of you here tonight, it may be a new term, a specialty service partnership, okay, SSP. And with this specialty service partnership, you have completely an endo-driven company, situation, platform, endo-driven. It's all about the endo and it's all about the endodontist. And most importantly for me to just take away that vulnerability, that uncertainty, you know, to take away those questions that I felt so just burdened with is this whole thing is future focused. This is about us moving ourselves, our practices and our specialty in the private practice arena forward into the future, ready for what's gonna come, ready for this new climate and this new paradigm shift. So I wanna point out a couple things on this page is right off of our website. You know, the first thing is together. And I say that because I have really have taken on uh, just the, the desire to be a part of what's happening. Everyone involved in US Endo Partners is really working hard to make sure that everything that we grow and do is successful and suits our vision and our mission. And so I can tell you that I really haven't worked with a group that works so well together. And I think that that's critical. We are owning our tomorrow. And when I say our, I mean endodontics. We are owning our tomorrow. We are making sure that endodontics is driven by endodontists and our specialty remains that. So that in this changing climate, we don't wind up in a situation where we wind up being part of an umbrella that is controlled by general dentists that then can dictate to us how we do what we do. So this is together owning our future and really driving endodontic excellence. And um, let's face it, the dental landscape is changing. It's becoming more corporate. And we believe that at US Endo and as part of US Endo Partners, that there is a better path forward and it's, it's here and, and we're walking on it. And, and we are here tonight to, to make you aware of what it is and how it might fit for you. 
So our mission to drive meaningful opportunity and growth for our endodontist owner partners as we pursue excellence together. And that is truly the mission of tonight, right? That's why we're here. And it's a, it is a meaningful opportunity because I think it represents something beautiful for us as individuals, as our, for our families. It represents something beautiful for our practice and our support teams. And it represents something beautiful for the future of endodontic private practice. The vision to spread the life-changing power of saving teeth, that's what we're all about. That is just the most beautiful thing. And you know, by being a part of this beautiful specialty, there are a few things that people are involved in that they get as passionate about as endodontists are passionate about saving teeth. And it's also to proactively shape our specialty and the next generation of endodontic influencers. And I'll go out on a limb and say, anyone that is with us is watching this, whether it's now or later, you are that endodontic influencer. And so this is your mission, this is your vision, and US Endo Partners is, is all about this. So the window of opportunity is open. You know, the question is, is can you see it? Is your mind open to it? And are you ready to jump through and join us in this beautiful, beautiful, incredible opportunity? And uh, so grateful to be a part of this tonight. I'm gonna turn it over to my, my brothers in arms here, Reed and DeVocker. Um, and just let you know that I'm here, I'm available, email me, call me, um, I'm here. If you wanna talk to me, if you wanna hear more about my experience, if, if anything I said tonight resonates with you and your specific practice situation, I'm totally here for you. So, so grateful for this opportunity to speak with you. I'm gonna turn it over and um, really appreciate everyone being here. All right, Reed, you're up next. Don't pull, pull some punches on it, okay? Don't let them get away with anything. Okay, okay, good. Can, you, can everyone see my slide? Is that good? Can you hear me okay? Okay, well, hey, uh, thank you for being on tonight. And uh, um, I miss you guys. I see a lot of my buddies are on and I miss you all. I miss being together. So I'm really looking forward to that next convention that we can hang out. So uh, hang in there. Listen, I'm gonna talk about tonight about staying physically and mentally healthy in our endodontic practice. Now I joined US Partners, uh, US Indo Partners this year and it's been an exciting transition. I joined this company because I could see the vision and the great growth op opportunity. And I wanted to be focused on being an expert cl clinician, but with the support and the protection of a doctor led doctor owned company. Uh, on top of that, there's a great investment potential with US Indo, so it's pretty exciting. The point is, if we can't stay healthy in our private practice, we can't enjoy the benefits that US Indo or retirement is gonna bring us later on in the future. So that's what we're gonna talk about tonight. I don't know if you feel like this, but this is how I feel after doing eight or 10 root canals in a day. I think endodontics absolutely beats our body up. And I don't think we get that recognition by many people unless you're an endodontist and you do it every day. Over 10, 15, 20 years, you really start feeling that in your body. I think there's also a mental wear we get from our patients. We get a lot of difficult patients and they want us to get everything done in one hour. Here's a uh, difficult patient right here. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, this is probably my most famous patient that I've ever had. I really am just showing him just to brag, that's all. He actually was a great patient, uh, but, but I do get, because I, I live in Southern California, the land of fruits and nuts, I do get a lot of crazy patients. They wear us down though. So how can we stay healthy in our practice? So let's, re, let's rewind about 10 years ago, I was a little league coach and I was, I, I, after a full day of endodontic practice, I went to my little league practice and I was demonstrating to the kids how to properly feel the ground ball. When they hit me the ground ball, I was so stiff and tight from working all day, I was unable to actually bend down and get the baseball, pick it up. And so my, my friend who's a physical therapist, he looked at me and he shook his head and he just said, Reed, you're an old man, you're an old man. And I knew right then that if I continued on this path, the path that I was on, of not doing anything, that I was in trouble. And I decided that I did not want my body to dictate when I had to retire from endodontics. I wanted to be the one 
that dictated when I retire, God willing, right? We can't control everything. But I wanted to control as much as I could. Fast forward a few months, my wife, my family, we all go on this uh, family vacation. We're at the resort. My wife says, let's sign up for a yoga class. Now, I hate doing yoga, I'll be honest, but I signed up at the resort. We went to a yoga class. We were the only ones there that signed up. So there's just two of us. I told the yoga instructor, I said, look, I'm a dentist. I've got a lot of back pain. I have uh, tight hips, tight hamstrings. Can you help me? So he spent the next hour taking my wife and I through uh, all these yoga stretches and dynamic stretching. And after the hour, I got up, I left, and it was the first time in years that my body was unlocked. I was free of, I was mostly free of pain. I was loose again. I felt like I was young. I was a teenager. And this feeling lasted about four days because on the fifth day, I went back to work. And when I went back to work, I started having pain again. And so, but the, the point was this yoga class kind of helped a light bulb go off in my mind. I realized that we can do stuff to take care of our body. And that's what I want to talk about today. I think there's a solution and it's something that we can do as an Adonis to stay healthy. And to me, the number one thing we should do is we should have a morning self-care routine, about an hour. Every morning before work, we should do a one hour self-care routine that consists of some kind of 20 to 30 minute movement or exercise and some sort of 10 or 15 minute stretching. And right there, when I do that, I feel great. I go to work feeling great. Then when I come home from work after getting stiff and tight again from sitting all day or, st or sometimes standing, I try to do a half hour of post self-care, which is usually like a brisk walk or, or some sort of exercise and then a 15 minute stretch. Now I'm not always perfect at this, but this is my goal. And when I, take, when I do my morning self-care routine, things feel better mentally and physically. So I wanna go through six things. I wanna talk about movement and exercise. I wanna talk about stretching. I wanna talk about nutrition and the role that plays in our practice and staying healthy. I wanna talk about our work position and posture. And then I wanna talk about game changers, things that I do that help my body and my mental uh, aspect feel better in life. And then lastly, I wanna briefly touch on recreation, things that we can do to have fun outside of work that then makes us a better clinician at work. So let's start with movement. So the first thing I do on my morning self-care routine, that's an hour, I get up at 5 a.m., I make coffee, and the first thing I do is I do a 20 to 30 minute movement or exercise. And you can do anything. You could do the, you can do a stationary bike, you can walk, run, uh, you can do yoga, you can lift, you can swim, you can row, um, you can do elliptical, the, the point is you wanna start doing a 20 to 30 minute movement or exercise in the morning. That's the first thing you do for your self-care. And this kind of gets your joints and ligaments uh, lubed up. It gets your muscles warmed up. It uh, helps you um, perfuse your body with oxygen. It gets your metabolism fired up. It uh, helps you release those exercise endorphins, those feel good hormones. And so this is the first thing I think to do to make your body feel better is to start loosening up with a 20 to 30 minute exercise. My favorite is the elliptical. I like the elliptical because it's low impact. I can read a book when I'm on the elliptical and I'll do about a 20 minute elliptical. And what I like to do is some kind of hit training, the high intensity interval training, which consists of about six 30 second sprints and then a rest for a minute and a half. If I'm feeling a little frisky that morning, I might go to eight, uh, eight 30 second sprints but um, I'll do a 30 second sprint, rest for a minute and a half, and I'll do that. And the science shows you that when you do a HIIT workout, like a 20 minute HIIT workout, equal to like a 40 or 45 minute slow cardio type workout. So that's why, um, you know, that's what I recommend. The elliptical is so low impact on your body. You can see my little weight setup. I have uh, the weights and you can see the 15, 20 surfboards I have in the background too, as uh, part of my recreation. Um, there's lifting too, that's another exercise movement. I used to lift uh, heavy weights and I was always trying to get bigger and stronger. I've sort of transitioned to doing machines now and, and, and doing like this X3 bar, which is a uh, resistant type training. And, and these uh, gives, it's low impact on your joints. And with this X3 bar system, I can do a, a full workout in 10 minutes. And it's all, 
a workout that goes to complete failure. So I've been dabbling with this thing. It's been a pretty good workout. But that's the first thing I do in the morning for my self-care routine is I do a 20 to 30 minute movement. And then I go to a 10 to 15 minute stretching phase. And I, I tell you, I, I hate stretching. Um, it's stretching and it's because of pain that I started stretching. But my problem area are my hips. And I'm, I'm probably guessing that the majority, majority, majority of us in Indo have sort of stiff and tight hips. So I try to open my hips up. It, it tends to kind of loosen up my lower back. And then also if I can uh, get my hamstrings more uh, loose, loosened up, I also feel less tension on my lower back. So these are some stretching um, exercises where you can kind of loosen your hips, you know, you know, find your exercise that works for you. These, these hip ex exercises and, and stretches are great for me. Uh, there's a book uh, called Foundation. That is probably the best book I've ever read on, on strengthening your, your back and, and relieving pain from your back. This is by Dr. Eric Goodman and Peter Park. And they have a series of five or six exercises that takes about 10 minutes to run through. And these are dynamic, active exercises. They're not passive stretches. You're actually gonna be sweaty when you run through this 10 minutes of exercises. But when I do this foundation workout, I just feel better. I, re I release a lot of pain from my lower back, my hamstrings loosen up, and again, I feel better and I get ready for my private, for private practice. These are some more of the foundation series. These are just some stretches. You will be drenched in sweat if you do this 10 to 15 minutes, you will feel it. The third thing I wanna talk about is nutrition. And you've done your, your, your morning routine, you've done your hour routine of 20 to 30 minutes of movement, 10 to 15 minutes of stretching, and now you're gonna to go to work. It's important that we eat true food, real food, that we eat whole foods, and that we cut down on eating all the processed foods and the sugar. Uh, the point is when I eat real food, when I eat true food, I feel uh, so much better. My, my mind is sharp. I have more energy. When I eat sugar, when I eat crap, if I'm at work or before work, I, I feel tired. I instantly start yawning and I have brain, I have get foggy, I get a foggy brain. And I don't think that's very effective when we're talking to patients or we're performing our endo. So nutrition is extremely important. And secondly, less alcohol, okay? I was going through my pictures in, on my phone and I realized about 80% of my pictures had to do with me drinking alcohol with my friends and my family. And so that had me a little bit worried. Uh, the picture on the left is we have five o'clock happy hour at, at our office. Uh, whether I'm doing a root canal or not, we still have happy hour. So, um, you know, obviously that's a joke. Trust me, the patient in the chair is a cop. So uh, this is a late root canal. And we are just joking around, no beer touch my lips in case you're gonna call the board. The right picture on the right is uh, Ronnie Rao is the vice president of corporate development and we're sharing an intimate beer and uh, enjoying ourselves. Uh, but the point I wanna make is when I drink less, I feel better. So I really believe that when we're working, you know, the, the night before, uh, I'd really cut down on my alcohol consumption or I don't drink. Um, I don't sleep as well when I drink. Uh, and I wake up, I don't feel as good when I, when I had a couple of drinks the night before. So I'm really trying to cut this down. I'm not saying to stop drinking alcohol. Uh, you can if you want, it's probably healthier, but I'm just trying to cut it, cut way back, especially during the week when I'm working. Fourth, I wanna talk about work position. I don't know if you've heard this, but uh, we keep, I keep hearing that sitting is the new smoking. And uh, this concerns me because all we do is sit. Uh, along with the rest of the world, but we sit frozen under the microscope. So we're sitting eight, nine, 10 hours a day sometimes. And uh, we need to learn how are we sitting? Are we sitting correctly? And also, is there a possibility that we can actually stand? Can we stand and do our endo? So it's something to think about. So here's how I sat for many, many years when I was performing endo. I didn't even notice I was doing this. I was extending my hips up and out. I was moving my chest up and I was leaning forward, kind of going to the patient. I was extending over the patient. And what this did is this actually put a lot of pressure on my hips and my lower back. And a physical therapist caught this. And she had, she said, Reed, you got to bring the patient to you. Bring the patient to your lap and bring the microscope to your eyes. Don't go to the patient. Don't go to the microscope. Bring him to you. And then I tuck my lower back 
into the chair. So I'm kind of sitting back. This slight posture change made a huge difference to how I felt at the end of the day. Just this one little change. So I encourage you to look at what, what you're doing to see what changes you can make. I've seen some of my associates work at a slight angle. The, cam the microscope's at a little bit of an angle and they'll work like that for an hour and a half. And they don't even realize it. Secondly, can you stand and do root canals? I've been dabbling with this for five years. I'm not sure, I'm sure there's other people that do this. I, get a, I have standing mats and I stand and look, if you can look at my posture, I'm straight, my back is straight, my neck is straight, everything's straight. It's just like I'm sitting, only I'm standing. This was a picture that I took yesterday. So my goal is if I can sit a patient, stand a patient and kind of rotate, it takes a lot of pressure off of sitting and, and, my, and my lower back and my hips. So this is something that's kind of uh, helped me. The key is you wanna have standing mats and you wanna be able to um, you know, stay in the same posture that you were sitting down. Fifth, game changers. I wanna share some of the best things that I've discovered or at least things that I do that help me feel better both mentally and physically. And the first thing is massage chairs. So I'm a big believer in massages. I think all of us, as in all in Adonis, we should get a we should schedule a massage or two a week. I actually think maybe US Indo should should pay for that. You know, maybe they pay for a massage you know, every week for us. But if you if you don't have the time, the next best thing is the massage chair. This thing is worth every penny. And so I sit in the massage chair, I watch uh, football, I watch baseball, sports, and I get a nice massage for 30 or 40 minutes. Um, the other thing that's been a huge game changer for my life are the rolling balls. I've spent a lot of money on specialty rolling balls only to find out that the simple cheap lacrosse ball or softball does, does a great job at doing, at targeting and getting a deep tissue massage and targeting those knots in your body. So what I do is I have, a, I always have a big knot in my left glute every time, every night after work, I try to roll out either on the softball or the lacrosse ball. I, I can roll my hips. I can roll my my, my hamstrings, my thighs, I roll my lower back. If you don't wanna use the ball, the roller balls, you can also use that black roller in the background. So there's lots of options, but I found that this is kind of a targeted deep tissue massage. These balls will roll, will kind of knock out those fascia knots that you created through all the endotrauma of us sitting, you know, eight or nine hours a day, four days a week for 15, 20 years. There's another thing called another game changer is the Hypervolt from Hyperice. This is like a mini massager that is quite powerful for being a handheld battery uh, pack. You know, what I do is I'll, I'll uh, have my wife, you know, I'll lay on the couch and my wife will actually massage my lower back for five or 10 minutes when we're watching TV. So this is just a nice little uh, uh, game changer here, this mini massager. Cryotherapy is something that I do almost every day. Um, this is, if you look up the research on cryotherapy, it's absolutely amazing. I go in these, the chamber on the right, I go in this full freezer for three to three and a half minutes at minus 170 degrees Fahrenheit. And guess what? Every time I do this, I feel great. So sometimes I go at 7 a.m. when they open before work and they close at six and I, and I drive home from work and I go to cryo twice a day. So when I can, I go twice a day. The benefits are amazing, look them up. But uh, the biggest thing I do is I f that I find is I feel great. It reduces your inflammation. It also increases your norepinephrine release by two, by two times. A lot of the people I'm in the cryo chambers with are people that have autoimmune diseases and disorders. And they tell me that the cryotherapy is actually completely taking away a lot of their, or most of their symptoms. So it's a pretty cool uh, uh, therapy. You can also do like a, a, a shower. Um, you can do poor man's cryo where you can do uh, one minute of hot water in the shower and then you do three minutes of cold and uh, that will get your body going in the morning and that'll also help you feel better. You know, this is in conjunction with your one hour self-care routine. The hyperbaric chamber. You know, I know this might be out, outside the box for a lot of people. This chamber, I went in this chamber on Friday. It costs $100 for an hour and the same thing as the cryo chamber, I came out of this feeling amazing, amazing. Um, my, it profuses your body with oxygen and um, 
you know, helps reduce inflammation. It's a lot of athletes use this to recover from their trauma. I think, uh, you know, I think we could use this to recover from our endodontic trauma that we cause to our bodies. A lot of times you can bring your phone in, you can bring books in, and uh, you can actually just sit in there for an hour. I end up falling asleep and I get a nap. So again, every time I do this, I feel really good mentally and physically. I don't know if you guys have seen the, the Normatac This is like a dynamic compression of, of pants. And a lot of the pro athletes and elite athletic teams are using this to help recover and push the lymphatic drainage uh, and toxins out, you know, out of their legs and help recover um, um, and feel better. And when I do this, I feel better. I do, I, a lot of times I'll sit on the couch when I do sit on the couch and watch TV, I'll use the Normatec for 30 or 40 minutes and um, my legs feel a lot better after I use this. And a couple things, cupping, acupuncture. These two things, I didn't see a great, a significant effect with these two modalities. I, I'd rather just do a massage. I didn't, the cupping didn't really change anything for me and the acupuncture, unfortunately, didn't change a lot either. So I just wanted to show those, those are some possibilities. Um, and uh, so anyway, that's that. The last thing I wanna talk about is recreation. Okay, uh, do things, find things outside of work that make you happy, make you feel good. When we're, he when we're healthier and happier outside of work, we're healthier and happier inside of work. I like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It's probably not the best thing to do for an endodontist. It can be quite dangerous. I do like to compete sometimes and uh, get in there. But when I do Jiu Jitsu, it just feeds my soul. I, I'm a better husband, I'm a better father, and I'm a better endodontist. Surfing. I know I just kind of wanted to rub it in that I'm in, that I'm living in Southern California and that the weather's always 75 degrees. I know you guys can't surf, but this, there is nothing, there is no better soul care than surfing. A good day of surfing is one of the best things I can think of. Uh, my daughters, my two daughters on the left and my son, we all go surfing together uh, usually once a week. And I just, I feel amazing when I come out of that water. Uh, the picture on the right is me trying to make it to the bathroom. Uh, my friend took this picture. Unfortunately, it was a rough day. I didn't make it. I didn't quite make it to the bathroom, but that sometimes happens. I still um, had a great surfing day. Reading. This is probably my favorite thing to do and for recreation. I love to sit in my jacuzzi for 20 to 30 minutes. I actually have this as part of my morning self-care routine. I sit for 20 to 30 minutes. I completely disconnect from life. I don't bring my phone out. There's silence and there's solitude. I just, I, I, I think, I pray, I thank God for all of my blessings. I read inspiring books and um, I just list, I just, I just sit out there and I enjoy nature. Some of the, some of my, some books that I've recently read that have really changed my life are the, is The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari by Robin Sharma and The Rhythm of Life by Matthew Kelly. These books are extremely inspiring. They, they inspire me to live a passionate life. And as Steve Frost says, it's the uh, to thrive in the drive, right? So we want to do that. So these are excellent books. In summary, do your morning routine. Have an hour of self-care. Take care of yourself. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to your family to take care of yourself through a 20 to 30 minute exercise or movement to get your blood pumping and your muscles loosened up. Do your stretching. 10 to 15 minutes of stretching so you can unlock your body, roll or do the lacrosse ball to target those knots that are stuck in there from the endotrauma that we uh, impart on it. Schedule a massage or buy a massage chair. Schedule a massage, it'll make you feel better. And then some of these uh, cryotherapy and sauna, these are excellent things to help you feel better. And so, and then lastly, the hyperbaric chamber. When I do all of these things, I feel excellent physically and mentally. So thank you so much. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out and uh, call me or email me. And there's so much more to share, but I appreciate your time. So next up is the Devakar Kinra. And um, thank you for everything, guys. Hey, uh, Reed, that was great. Um, Thanks, Paul. Brett, could you pin me there and put me on? Uh, Oh, sorry. I want the. Uh... You want to stop sharing your screen, read, and I can move forward there here. Go. There we go. Got it. All right. 
Man, Reed, that was really great. I, I don't know when you fit in root canals with all that pre-care and post-care. That's amazing. That's, you do so much for yourself. I appreciate it. You're a real inspiration. And Brett, you really set the bar really high. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. My name is Devakar Kinram. I won't show any pictures of where I live in Flint, Michigan, to make everybody jealous. So, uh, you know, I can do what I can. Uh, I, I'll just keep stick to the lecture here. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about something uh, a little bit different in the sense that I'm going to show you um, creating a communication plan for success with the referring dentist. And I'm going to talk to you about how I started off doing it and how it's evolved over the years from being a you know, solo practitioner to having an associate, to having a partner, to being a partner in U.S. endodontics. You're going to see how it evolved along the way. And I think that, it, you know, it's, it's been a great experience getting along there. And now this isn't just for somebody who's starting up. This can be for somebody who's adding an associate or if you're starting a satellite practice this is, or, or just live in your own practice, how to really communicate um, from start to finish. And if you take a look at this, really the communication plan begins with a couple of things. It begins with a branding plan and it begins with a marketing plan. Now those two things put together give you a communication plan. Now if you don't have a good communication plan, you are not building value in your community. And that's what you're really, the goal is to build value in your community, to set you apart from everybody else. And that's always what I thought, you know, and this is one of the reasons I've taken forward from the beginning of my practice to where I'm at now. And how do you do this communication plan? You know, with the branding and the marketing, I was dirt poor when I started my practice. I gotta tell you, I was dirt poor. I, um, I had a son when I went into my endodontic residency. I left with four kids when I got out of endodontic residency. Okay, I'll let you guys do the math. So I had a lot of mouths to feed. And I said, well, let me, let me start building my own practice. And so um, I went ahead and I was you know, in Flint and I went down to the University of Michigan Flint and I, I didn't have any money. So I went to the economics department and I said, hey, do you guys have a marketing department here? Or, um, can I put up a classified ad? They said, absolutely. Um, we can even give you an intern. And so they gave me an intern that I didn't even have to pay. They got college credit for it and they came and, and I started my practice in September of after I graduated from my residency. So in that summer, they worked with me and how to create this brand. So the brand they said is, is, is the branding element is, is bigger than you think. It's a logo. And so everybody says, oh, I just put out a logo and it's all set but it's gotta have a color palette, a typeface and a tagline. And this brings your mission and your philosophy from your practice. So everybody knows, you know, some logos are just easy to recognize. You know, when my kids used to pass this sign, you know, that meant stop and get French fries, you know? This, you know, watch every Disney movie that's around. Um, this is the way my logo started and this is the way my logo's at now. And I have to tell you that I really spent a lot of time uh, figuring this out. And, and I think now with US Endodontics, they, they're, they're ready to help and, and brand your um, personal logo. And because you are still an individual in that practice. I love that ability. Um, and when I started my marketing setup, I really, you know, they said, these are the four P's of marketing. I never understood marketing. I, I, I knew nothing about it. The four P's was product. I said, well, product, that's pretty easy. Product, I, I do root canals. That's it. They go, not really, you know, you do a lot of things that maybe your general dentist may not know about. Um, you know, do you, do you place the final restoration? Do you do the core buildup? Um, you know, I said, yeah, well, if the, you know, the, the GP doesn't know that, they probably won't ever, you know, want you to do it. Um, do you do microsurgery? Again, that seems, you know, pretty basic for most endodontists. But again, depending on what part of the country you're in, that, that can be kind of a turf war. Um, do you do implants? Another turf war. I know that there, you know, depending on what city you're in, I know in Chicago, there's a lot of people doing implants. I know in, in different parts of the country that that's part of the practice. Great, advertise it. Make sure that the GP knows what your product is. I mean, even though, you know, and that's we're doing Botox. You know, what do you do about setting your price? Well, guess what? Patients are gonna complain what your price is no matter what. They're gonna pay, uh, complain about a $5 copay. They're gonna complain about a $50 copay, a $500 copay, $5,000 copay. So I say, put the value in your price. No, you know what you're worth. Set your, set your prices on what you think you're worth. Um, place, it all depends on location. You gotta have a great location, meaning you gotta be visible. You have to be, uh, you know, people have to be aware of where you're at. I'm at a great cross section of two major highways. I'm right off the highway. I have a really large drawing area and I'm just situated well. 
And then you got to do a ton of promotion and that helps with the communication. So when I talk about that, it, what, what does that really mean? So what I did was when I first started out, I had an introduction letter. Now the introduction letter went to 150 dentists. Okay. But I didn't send it all out at one time. I sent 50 a week for the three weeks leading up to me opening my office. When I send 50 a week, I'll send it on the Thursday before it arrived on Monday and I would go and visit 10 offices a day before I started opening my practice. One, you can't do it too early because there's going to be nowhere to refer to, but you have to do it ever, you know, ongoing. So three weeks before, so I do 50, you know, so that, that way in my introduction letter, it introduces me. It has a referral pad so that they know where, where I'm at, where I'm located, what my office phone number is. And it says in there that I'm coming to visit you. So it tells you that I'm going to be there so that when I get to their office, I'll say, hey, did you get my introduction letter? It's my, you know, icebreaker. And they'll say, uh, yeah, I threw it away. Great. Uh, so I give them another one right there. I give them the referral pad, you know. And, and the reason is that, you know, that you got to be able to get in and see the dentist. And a lot of times that's really difficult. So you got to find where the dentists are at. They're at the local dental society meetings. You have to go there. You have to shake their hands, you know, because nobody is ever going to refer to you unless they know who you are. They got, they got to meet you. You got it. You have to be, you have to meet them. You have to be their friend. You have to be able to have something in common with them to refer to you. I really truly believe that. And you know, why did I send this letter? Okay. Because I got to tell you, you know, my name, looking at my name, you know, this is what I look like. You know, I'm thinking, okay, I'm this really prominent doctor. This is great. And this is what people are thinking who I am. So I got to show them, hey, listen, guys, I know what's going on here. I will tell you, I know good endodontics. I know what I'm talking about. And I want you to know that too. So let me tell you, you everybody has a prejudgment before you get in there. And I got to tell you, you got to get out there and you have to introduce yourself. And I think that makes a big stepping stone if they're going to refer to your office. So when it comes to communication plans, uh, you got to do personal visits, okay? And what's going to happen? You're going to get to the front desk and boom, they're going to stop you, right? You're going to get the Gestapo. They're not going to say, hey, you can't come in. Doctor is very, very busy. Even though he's checking his Facebook in the back, probably, he won't let you in. So what I did was you got to become friendly with the front desk, okay? They're the ones who rule the office. And so, you know, I just had a bunch of kids. So I made this little brag book and I kind of showed, you know, the front desk, I said, hey, you know, doctor's busy, but hey, would you like to see my three cute triplet daughters? And they're like, oh, and then that's the way you break their, you know, into their, you know, conversation. And then it becomes a lot more friendly. They, they want to have a connection with you. So you have to know how to connect with each person, whether it's the doctor, whether it's the front desk, you got to find that connection. Okay. So, you know, and then we'll, you know, we'll do a quarterly communication, we'll do a newsletter. Uh, but, you know, I think one of the most important things is to get involved, whether it's at the local dental society level or the ADA or the MDA for our association or the local dental, we're, I'm always involved, you know. Um, but my biggest thing that I think I did was I did a university affiliation and I went and taught at the dental school. Now, I know a lot of you are like, oh, I'm going to go back and teach the grad students. No, forget the grad students. The grad students are great. They're all set. I want you to go teach the undergrads. Why? Because they're going to be your referring dentist. They're going to come out and be in your community, and they are really important to you. They are really important because they're going to be your next line of referring dentist. The first office I walked into when I was um, sending those letters out, was the, the, one of the associate dentists was a dental student that had seen me as a resident. And I knew how important it was to be in that school because I knew those were gonna be my future, you know, referring docs. And then I say, you have to do a high level of education. You gotta do a high level of education and to your referring dentist. You know, whether it's video or, you know, audio, you have to do something. So in ours, the first thing that we did was, you know, as of recently is I've endowed two scholarships for the, um, it's called the Kinra Family Endodontic uh, Scholarship here. And what we do is we did one for the University of Michigan and the University of Detroit. Those are our two dental schools. And I endowed a scholarship for third and fourth year dental students who were interested in endodontics. And this is one of my, um, uh, you know, winners of, of the um, and scholarship. And now, She's at the University of Iowa. She's she's learning. Uh, she she's a uh, endo resident and she's doing great. And I'm excited for her. I, I'm glad that she participated and took interest in endodontics and, and took it to the future. 
So what about that education plan? I said high level of education. I think every single endodontist, whether they're coming out of school, they're an associate, or even currently need to have know some type of topic. The best topic you can talk about is case selection and diagnosis. You should have a canned lecture that you can give at any moment in time on this topic, okay? Uh, you gotta get a sponsor, because I think let's reduce the cost, okay? Let's get a imaging company, let's get a supply company, let's get a manufacturer to help sponsor it. I invite about 20 to 30 docs, and guess what? You know, at least 15, you know, 10 to 15 show up, I'm pretty happy, okay? Uh, you got to offer free food. That's great. Can't have buffets anymore. So, you know, we, we still bring in, you know, food and get everybody fed because that's a really important part of it. Keep it about 60 to 90 minutes. You want to offer one hour of CE with it. So, you know, about an hour of CE and about maybe, you know, 30 minutes of getting together, mingling. You know, do a dentist really like to talk to each other if they just give an, out an opportunity outside of, you know, clinic. Um, this is my education plan. I teach dentists all the time. I love educating dentists. I think that's a great part of having that relationship. Um, root canals and rosés, one of my favorite referral events. What we do is we invite all the, the staff around Valentine's Day. We give them all a rose and then we have rosés at, at a local uh, restaurant. They love it. It's great. I have a sponsor. It's perfect. Uh, the profitable PPO, we bring uh, uh, somebody in to talk about how to make their PPO practice as profitable as possible, because if they're profitable and they're doing their bread and butter dentistry, hopefully that means that they're referring more to me. So that's really important. And of course, you know, my favorite is bourbon night. This is one of my best, this is one of my best well-attended and funnest education. So we had a DVD in the background doing the CE. That was perfect. I talked to a local clothing store that had great men's and women's, like a boutique store. That guy said that he would buy all the bourbon and all the food if I could bring 20 docs to his place after hours. His place closed at five, we were there at six. He said he sold more in that one night than he had sold all week long. Of course, you have high income earners going to a nice store. Everybody was happy. One of my favorite events, okay? so. Really that communication plan, of course we do mailings. I do twice a year a mailing, just catch up people what I'm doing. Um, we send a, a postcard out, year-end gifts. Year-end gifts are, you know, they're just thank yous, right? We celebrate our anniversaries, a one, a five, a 10 year. And one of my favorite things recently I do, I know a lot of you um, anodontic residents, when you were there, we, did, we do case review. I go and I do a lunch with a dentist. I said, here's the last three cases you send me. You know, this is a, the pre-op, here's a cone bean, here's a post-op. And, and I run them through how we did the procedure. They're actually, they want to know that. They feel really good that their patients are getting treated well, okay? And, and you got to be on social media, you know, Facebook and, and Instagram. You know, Brett, he's probably one of the best guys on, on social media. All right, so timeline live. Okay, we're, we're practicing now. Who are you? Are you the boss or are you the leader? And I got to say that in my practice, I set the tone for my practice. I set the way we should be communicating to my team. My team communicates to the patients. The patients then go ahead and I say every time after at the end of the procedure, I go and say, hey, guess what? Did you have a good experience? Did I exceed your expectations? Why? It's not hard to exceed patients' expectations. Patients' expectations for root canals are, are, are so minimal. You just have to do so little to get above that. So you exceed their expectations and say, hey, I say, hey, go back and tell your doctor that you had a great experience. Patients are your walking billboard. And then, then I said to my doctors, hey, go and tell your non-referring doctor friends, please uh, you know, send to our office, okay? I, that's the way I do that. And in, in the end, it gets out in the public. You know, If you've been out there long enough, like Reed and Brett have, they love, I'm sure, getting referrals from other offices and it was because they trust their, their friend, their, their mom, their dad, more than anybody else. So it's really important to do that. And to do this successfully, to do this successfully, you need to have systems in place, okay? You need to have systems in place and create those systems, create those scripts. Guess what? Anytime somebody calls on my phone, they're gonna hear what the system is, right? They're gonna hear a script. Uh, they know how to answer, hey, is doctor nice? Is doctor, um, does he know how to give a good injection? Uh, I'm really scared of the root canal. They know how to answer every single question. That script should be there for your front desk and for your assistant. And in, in reality, what we're trying to do is build rapport. 
We're trying to build rapport. That's not easy to do in, in 45 minutes to an hour, hour and a half, however long you spend on your root canal. So we bring patients in, we give them a health history, and then you'll see that screen in the background. I put a slideshow on of my kids on some vacations we went on, and people all of a sudden chill out. They relax. They said, oh, doctor, you're, you're a family man. You, you have, uh, you know, my partner does this with her family. She puts her dogs in there. Okay, so everybody gets to see a little bit about your personal life and then it takes the fear out of it. Okay, I'm sure that Reed probably puts his cryogenic pictures up there and scares the hell out of every, you know, one of his patients that come through there. Um, but in reality, what have I done since joining US Endo Partners? Look, I joined in February and I, I went through a lot of decision making and I said, I want to have one thing. I, I enjoy running my practice. Yeah, there is a headache sometime. I want to get rid of some of those things. I want somebody to take some of the pressure off of that part of it, but I want to have autonomy. And that's the one thing I thought I was going to lose was autonomy. If I'm going to be able to keep up with the latest trends, am I going to be able to take my practice to the next level? And now U.S. Endo Partners has been very supportive in our, my latest endeavor in using Refera. It's a digital referral-based system. I love it. It's a great way for my referring dentist to go ahead and auto-populate uh, this uh, online referral system. And all of a sudden, when the, it, they get referral, uh, we will get a text that says, hey, so Dr. Smith has... Uh, referred Mrs. Jones for root canal. And now I don't have to wait for Mrs. Jones to call me. I can call her. Okay. And a lot of times, you know, they ended, you know, the GPs, they, they will say, Hey, um, here's two or three referrals. Uh, go ahead and make your own decision. And, and that's not what we want. We want them to refer to us. And sometimes they'll call us, but sometimes they'll just give the patient the referral and say, go ahead and make your appointment. Well, now we know when that uh, referral was given and we can contact the patient. And this will tell you, how long it takes to answer that referral, how long it takes for that patient to get in and how many canceled and scheduled. It's a great system. US Endo Partners has been very supportive in making that reality. Because in re what, what it really comes down to is that every one of our referrals has a lifetime value, okay? Everybody has a lifetime value, okay? And in our office, you know, what are we saying here is that, you know, to acquire a new referral is difficult and to keep them happy is hard. And sometimes, you know, which referrals should you target to maximize your profits? You know, th does it matter? You know, it does. It does. Do you want to worry about the A referral, the B referral, the C referral? We all understand that. And if you take a look at customer lifetime value, the average Taco Bell eater has is worth to Taco Bell about $12,000, you know, in a lifetime. And I'll read probably about five bucks because he only eats healthy food, you know. Uh, Cadillac, okay. Uh, average Cadillac, uh, you know, $322,000. And Lexus, the average lifetime value uh, is about $600,000. Well, I break this down into my practice also. And A referral is somebody who refers me about $60,000 a year, you know. A B referral is $30,000 a year and C is $17,500. Is this something taboo to talk about? No, these are people that if they value you, you want to jump head over heels for these people. And that's really important for me to know this number, okay? To be successful in your practice, you need to have really four things. You need to have a great endodontic mentor. You need to have a great accountant. OK, uh, a good legal team and really a strategic partner. And I thought that, you know, when I was looking into this, U.S. Endodontic, U.S. Endo Partners really fit all four of those categories. Um, there's mentors for when I need it. We have a clinical advisory board there. They help me with my accounting. You know, I guess I got to be honest with you. My account really didn't understand this model. And when I looked at this, I said I went to my um my personal friends and my relationships who were in private equity. I showed them what was going on and they said, this is a no brainer debacker. This is, this is easy, this should, you, just, you should be doing this. And again, there will be people that will say, oh, they don't understand the model. That's okay, you know? I, want, I, would, want, I would encourage you to talk to me personally and I can guide you how I went through my decision-making process because it really came down to trusting the right people. And for me, that was people who were involved in private equity. Okay, and, and this is what I was thinking, like, well, what am I going to do when I exit? Who's going to come 
to Flint, Michigan and buy my practice, okay? As I said, it goes like Brea, California, and then Flint, Michigan, like the second place that most people want to live, okay? But am I going to sell my practice? Am I going to merge it? You know, am I going to merge with another, you know, big office? Am I going to liquidate it? Am I going to transfer it? So I went and looked at some of the research. And if you take a look at some of the, the acquisitions and sales, the average endodontic practice, take a look at this, it's interesting. The average endodontic practice, for every million dollars in collections, you're gonna get about $676,000. And I thought, okay, that's a one-time sale. I will just sell it and it's gone. You know, that, that's, that's final, like, that, that's all I'm gonna get for it. You know, but, but again, as Brett was saying, there's so many people who are coming out with such big, um, debt load and they have so much going how are they going to go and then buy my practice for what i feel it's worth so i decided to take a different route and i realized that i'm looking at collections i'm looking at overhead i'm looking at income and i said hey my practice is extremely profitable i feel it is but is it really and i said i'll go down and look at the numbers and then when some people talk about ebitda really we don't have to go into it in detail but what it means is just it's it's how profitable your practice is when you normalize your income so when you see that you are in a profitable practice, I would not wait until my practice has become outdated. I wanna just ride it out to the end. I wanna use it when it's the most profitable because I wanna use the power of leverage of my practice to get the most value out of it. I'm not selling my practice, I'm becoming a partner in a bigger entity that I can then work and go at rocket ship north. And, and it's really, that's what's gonna elevate me to the next level. Okay, so this is the way I looked at it when I came into there. Look, I, I take business very seriously in my practice, okay? I had to feed four mouths and plus my wife and I right when, the, you know, when I was a young and starving dentist. So I took every money, uh, every penny seriously when I, when I was looking at this. And this is why I wanted it because I wanted not just the cash, but I wanted a piece of equity that I knew was worth something. And I knew that you have to believe in the equity and you have to believe in the structure. And I think US Endodontic has great infrastructure. Look at what's out there and you'll see that we have some of the best infrastructure, some of the greatest partners and some of the best um, PE team that you can actually believe in. So thank you very much for being with me today. I hope I could answer some questions for you. Um, you know, the chat feature is open. I think that um, Brett, you're gonna take over the Q and A, but look, I'm always available to you. Um, I'll put my email in the chat. You can you, uh, you can contact me anytime. Okay, thanks, thanks, my friends. Awesome, great work. That was beautiful. Uh, thank you, Reed and and Devaker. Uh, phenomenal partners. Uh, couldn't be any more blessed. And this is just a few of many. Um, I know it seems like maybe some of you were seeing Devaker in a smaller box um, to get his fancy dancy uh, slides with him on there. Um, it was a little bit different than Reed's and I, but I hope the message was clear. Uh, we'd really love to field some questions. Um, it's great that everyone was able to be here to hear our experiences. I think what we, what we want to have you walk away with is the idea that uh, this is a new paradigm. This is new. Um, and you are in a position now where there's already been tremendous growth of US Endo partners. There's, a, as you saw from my slide, a tremendous number of practices that have joined. Um, you know, for those first few practices, they, you know, that was really, I think, where, where it was probably very scary. Uh, but at this point in time, I know for me, I want to be very clear and very genuine in saying it's been a life-changing experience. A lot of those burdens and worries that I had have just faded away and allowed me to live, allowed me to pursue some of my other interests and really allow me to flourish. So, um, yeah, no questions are coming in, but we would love to hear some if you have them. Otherwise, I know for sure uh, ourselves, as well as all the other partners, if you go to usendopartners.com, all the practices are listed. I'm sure there's going to be people that you know, um, probably would recommend maybe reaching out to them first. What we like to do as partners is connect you with someone who fits where you are in your life, what your practice is like, and hear from those people. But I think, Devaker, what you said at the end there for me was huge, which was that um, my advisors all really sort of told me, I'm not sure about this. And what I learned later on was that it's because they didn't know. 
They don't know about this type of transaction. And my brother-in-law, who's in the private equity space, when I brought him in and he took some calls with me and listened and really, and it was funny, Devaker was the exact same words. He said, Brett, this is a no brainer. Um, and so I can say to this point, I, you know, seven months in, it's been life-changing, it's been amazing and it's growing and it's just incredible. Uh, so it looks like uh, uh, Richard Stevens asked Brett and others, how did US Endo uh, provide support during COVID? I mean, I don't, do you, Reed, do you wanna take it or do you want me to answer it? But I mean, it was, for me, it was tremendous. No, go ahead, <laughs> you go ahead, that's sure. great. Well, I, so, so my experience was a little different than Devaker and Reed in that I joined literally basically the day before the world shut down. And for me going from all the feelings that I was expressing and then now immediately I joined on Wednesday and on Friday, I got an email from the clinical advisory board with all the forms I needed, letters that had a template for me to put my logo in and sign my name, explaining to the referrers how we were gonna handle everything, letters to the patient, uh, uh, things to post in the office, the protocols, which as we all know, were just being written. Um, all of that was handled without my even thinking about it. Um, I was getting deliveries of PPE constantly. Uh, US Endo the, the, went to work to procure this, this important, important stuff that everyone else was really struggling to get. And we all had these partner calls, which were just incredible. You know, you know, 20 some partners on the phone weekly describing situations, questions the staff had, things that they were help, that were helping, things that reassured patients. And to have this kind of support after being off on my island, and you saw it, it was pretty. But I'll tell you what, being together with a network of other endodontists, um, all with the same efforts and all with the same desires to really advance, uh, the COVID support, uh, Richard, was, was honestly tremendous. And for me, such a gift because it was instant. The second I got into US Endo Partners, COVID hit, and all of a sudden I had this incredible support network and I, I truly felt blessed. So um, it looks like Larry Farsakian. Hey, Larry, my good friend. Uh, how long did the process of joining US Endo take from initial contact to becoming a partner? Uh, Reed, you wanna take that one for you? Yeah, you know, it took me, it varies from each person, but it took me about five months to uh, actually, once I signed and became a partner, with uh, US Indo Partners. So it was about a five month, five to maybe six months, but I think it was about five months if I remember correct, correctly. Yeah, Vakar, what was your experience? Yeah, I think mine was um, a, a pretty similar, maybe, um, you know, I think just the legal part, you know, but you gotta have a good legal team that understands private equity. And, and if anybody was ever interested, I, I think I, I used uh, Dykema and they are very uh, familiar with the process. And so that's really what was a rate limiting factor is how good your lawyer is. And even my own personal lawyer said, hey, I can't handle this. I need somebody, you, you need somebody that, that understands this concept a little better. And he was the one who recommended Dykema and they were awesome to work with. And, and, I, I, and, and I worked with my personal lawyer and them together. And we, we all three worked together. It was great. I'd say it took about the same amount of time though, Reed. Yeah, I think all three of us use Dykema. Is that right, Brett? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think that's... Oh, yeah. And that's I, and, I, and that, exactly, guys, it, it speaks to the fact that this is not something that a dental accounting type of team can grasp. It, it's just, it's too, it's too advanced in a sense. They're not used to these types of acquisitions. Uh, but what I would say to everyone as far as time is what it really involves is a diligent effort on your part. But I would say if you're interested, if this sounds intriguing, if you can see why this is a paradigm shift, my advice to everyone that I've spoken to is just dive in, you know, find out what's available for you, find out what your practice looks like through this lens and see if it's possible. Once you get to that point, then getting the deal completed, um, again, as they get used to doing it, if you use the right team, we all use the same firm, Dykema, which handled these types of transactions. It went very, very smoothly. And I would say that for me, again, it was a little longer process because I became aware of what was being built uh, in 2018 and was having conversations over time, learning about how it was being built. And then ultimately when the opportunity for me came, when it was like, okay, Brett, you know, we see your practice, we're interested. I literally just ran straight to it. Like I, I had no doubts that I wanted to pursue it, but it was really that conversation pulling in someone who knew private equity, that was my brother-in-law, to really feel like, okay, this is the way to go. Um, and now you have so many more partners and colleagues that have been through it 
that this process is getting smoother and quicker. And so to answer your question, Larry, it does vary. But now that there's so many more partners that you can rely on, I think the decision to join can be, can be much easier for each endodontist. Any other questions? All right. The first U.S. Endo webinar is in the books. This has been an amazing honor, fellas. Um, again, these are two incredible partners of mine. I've got uh, so many others, um, and that's the Endodontis, as well as such a dedicated and brilliant team of, of business partners uh, that are just so involved in supporting us every step of the way. Guys, would you say that that's been your experience as well? It's been very great. Much. 100%. Yeah, I can't wait to see you guys in the real life. Yeah, yeah. So um, so we are here, um, not just us, but anyone on the US Endo website. Um, obviously, Kim Livesey, Bromwell is available. Um, you may hear from James Twelman, uh, Ronnie Rowell. Uh, the whole team is just tremendous. So use us all as resources. We're very much like 1000% committed to growing this platform. It's happening right before our eyes. We're very proud of it. And everyone is working together to make that happen. And we would love for you who is sitting here watching right now or later on, we would love for you to be a part of this with us. So uh, please utilize us as a resource and know that we're here to support you. And ultimately we're all in it to win. And um, by winning, we win, our practices win, our families win, and the specialty of endodontics wins. Amen, All right, Brett, thanks, man. Thanks, Reed. Thanks, Brett. Uh, again, yeah, we're always here. Email us, message us. Thanks, guys. Have a great night. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks for Thank joining. You guys.